And good morning and welcome to Touch Space Today. My name is Ron Foster and I'm touching base with you as I do every day except for Sundays. And also now Saturday. Saturdays is kind of like a free for all on Instagram. So that's the only place you'll find me only on Instagram. I probably won't be on YouTube on Instagram or on Saturdays. I mean, only on Instagram or on Saturdays. Did I get that right? Did I say that right? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me put, I, I see I got to put my, my little phone down because people always call me when I go online. It is like they're waiting for me to go online. What's going on, Derek? Derek is in the building. First in the building. Derek is in. Good morning, Ron and RLP family. So good to see you. Lisa is number two in the building. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a lot to talk about in the news, but we're going to talk about something that happened yesterday that we can all benefit from today. And um, so we'll talk about that. And uh, we were supposed to have a uh, photographer on today, but that didn't work out. So we got something better. We have Gwendolyn coming on today. So, so Gwendolyn will be popping on and we're going to be sharing with you guys some information that is going to definitely help you if you are in social media. And that is called diversification. That is our subject for today. So hang in there, wait around, get in there. This is Wisdom Wednesday as usual, but we are talking diversifying your social media strategy. So we'll be talking that today. So come on in. Uh, let's see who's going on and what's going on. Instagram, Instagram, Juicy Gal is in the Instagram world. Come over to YouTube if you haven't yet. And if you have, just want to go to YouTube and just look up you, um, Touch Base Daily or Ron Lewis Photos. But Touch Base Daily has made, is getting a real traction. So if you put Touch Base Daily in the um, search engine of Google, it will automatically pop up. So that's how popular we're becoming. That's a good thing. We are getting some traction. So if you're in Instagram, pop on over. And if you are been watching us on Instagram, also pop over to your Touch Base Daily on YouTube. Subscribe and like. Like is most like is important. Subscribing is important. Yeah. What's going on? Felicia Fifi is in the building. I wish I had bells and whistles here. Because I'll be definitely saying, having bells and whistles when y'all come in. Yes, Fifi is in the building. Fifi is in the building. Eldridge, hey, man, how you doing? Good morning. He says, Ron, I'm here. Mr. Eldridge Dunmore is in the building. And Chrissy is in the building as well. Chrissy, good morning. A good morning to you. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just waiting. Uh, so let's go on some politics first of all. First of all, Super Tuesday was yesterday. Super tu Tuesday was yesterday. The voters, the votes are in. It's a Biden versus Trump match. We knew it was going to be that way anyway, but now it is official because Nikki Haley bows out of the race. She's out. She's gone. She lasted up until this point. But what she, she may have lost the race, but she is now a household name. So I don't think we've seen the last of Nikki Haley. I say look for her in the next presidential election. You know, this is 2024. Look for her in 2028. She's still young. She can do it. So I think she also ran. She did it to just become a household name as well. Everyone's talking about Haley. So she's gone. She's done. She's been axed. She has, she's gone. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it all comes down to. She is gone. Okay, let me check over Instagram. Instagram, oh, everyone's out of there. And you know, it's becoming where I may not have to go on Instagram any longer on touch on these um, um, dailies because everyone seems to come straight to YouTube, which is great. So good to see everybody. Okay, what else is in the news? Uh, okay, that was that was in the news, but also yesterday, for those that missed it, yesterday we had a we had a um what do you want to call it? A Facebook Instagram stall. <laughs> they got shut, they were shut down yesterday. And uh, so you couldn't get on. I remember popping on and hey Kimmy Kim, and I 
we got on yesterday and I was like, yo, what's going on? What is going on? I, I can't get on my Instagram. And I thought, I thought maybe I had been hacked or something. Then obviously I called some friends up and they say, oh, Facebook is down. Then I went to the, obviously the internet next, and which I probably should have gone first, but I didn't think to go first to the internet. And the internet said, oh, Facebook and Instagram are down. So I had this conversation with Gwendolyn yesterday and we're like, yeah, you know what? It's something that we need to be thinking about as we do our social media platforms is that we need to diversify especially all of us who are doing small businesses. We are hobby for profit. <laughs> we are hobbyists for profit. So that way we're taking our game onto the road and we're using social media to share our businesses, our skills. So we need to have a strategy. So, uh, hey, Jack, Gary's in the building. What's going on, Gary? So good to see you. So, uh, what else is happening in the news? Uh, you know what? Here's a stat that I discovered this week, and I was I didn't talk about it yesterday. But does anyone know what the number one export out of Israel? Now, my Israel friends don't get upset with me when I talk about this, but I have to talk about it. Um, does anyone know what the number one export? I think I posted it. So you might those that follow my my way or touch base daily channel the channel you got that information what is the number one export out of israel okay no one no one knows what the number one export is what 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 is going on? Really? Yes. Kimmy says, it's diamonds. It's diamonds. Which is ironic. Because there are no diamonds in Israel. <laughs> there are no diamond fields in Israel. There's no, there's no, there are no diamonds in Israel. So why is it the number one export? Can we take a flight? Can we all get on a plane? Can we get on a plane right now and figure out where do you think they get their diamonds from? Where do they get their diamonds from? I mean, think about it. The number one export from Israel are diamonds. When there are no diamonds in Israel. Yeah. You know what it is? Congo. Africa. Yes. Thank you, Kimmy. Kimmy's on it. Kimmy's on it. Kimmy's with us today. Yeah. It was a shocking. Uh, uh, I saw a video that went across the screen. Uh, one of the stories of a gentleman who does politics and all this kind of like stat stuff and what's going on and who's fueling who economies. And I said, diamonds. And he said, diamonds are the number one export in from Israel. And I said, that can't be real. That can't be right. I, you know me, I had to go do the fact check. So I went and checked it out. I looked it up on Google, looked it up on several resources, and guess what? I couldn't believe it. I looked at the GDP of Israel and found out that Israel has, that's their number one export, but they get it from the Congo. And guess what's going on in the Congo, folks? In different parts of Africa where there's diamonds. It's worse than the slave trade. Worse than the slave trade. Kind of scary, right? Kind of scary. Wow. Just shocking. Just shocking. Hmm. I got little arrows going on here. Let me see what's going on on my little screen. Okay, good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're looking good. Okay. We're looking good. Well, guess who's here? Guess who's here? 
we are going to, uh, she said, wait a minute. So I'm going to wait a minute. Can't get her, at, can't get her in kind of like an in, in, indisposed area. <laughs> but guys, if there's something you should be following in the world is what is going on, one in Sudan, one the civil war that's going on in Sudan, Africa, and the other one is what is going on in the Congo, the Republic of Congo, Congo, Africa. And you will see children and all the people that are mining, they're mining these um, dangerous fields and mines and for diamonds and for the materials that are in our cell phones. And you would think, you would think if, if Congo got a penny, just a penny from every cell phone, every cell phone, every television, every laptop, every tablet, and all the computers that we have on the planet that use the materials that come from the Congo, which is one of the only places on earth that it comes from. There you would have, do you, do you think they would be as poor as they are if they just got a penny? A penny. If the Congo got a penny, if the people of Congo got a penny from every television, every device. Guys, that's something you should have on your radar. I know. Gwendolyn, are you ready to come into the oh, into the stage? <laughs> there she is. I don't, I don't know what's going on today. I don't know. <laughs> I was going I on with full, Gwendolyn. Look at there. Look at it's there. I have, I have a full day of recording. And for whatever reason, this little guy is like, I don't want to behave today. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. The push comes to shove. We'll move to a different camera. But ridiculous. Ridiculous right now. Oh, I, look. This My boy Kenny is on. My, this, can I tell you about my friend Kenny? I just, I love, this is one of my, one of my favorite friends in the world. And Kenny makes a big point here. He says, let me just, get, let me just, hold, let me just read it first. Oh, child labor in Congo is a critical issue that affects thousands of children stemming from deep rooted poverty, conflicts, and a lack of access to education. The Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in minerals such as cobalt, which is using all, that's the, that's the mineral that's used in all of our electronics which is essential for the products of modern electronics like smartphones and laptops. Unfortunately, this wealth has not translated into proving into improved living conditions to improve living conditions for the majority of its population. Instead, it has led to the exploitation of children. So guys, when you think about the diamonds that you're using or you get or you grab, think about the children in Congo. Ken, that was thank you so much. Ken is Ken is my palsy wowsy, and um, and for those that don't know, uh, just so I, I want, I'll highlight him also because he supports my work and supports what I do. He is also one of my Patreon members. Um, he does a tutoring, vir virtual tutoring for students to get high grades on their SATs and I guess their PSATs and all those all those SATs. Um, and, um, and he does on one-on-one -on -one tutoring with his students. That's his job. He does it well. So if you are, if you have kids out there that are trying to get to the next level in their college education or going to better high schools from junior high school or going, I think from elementary to good junior high school, look up Mr. Kenny Tan. That's my buddy. I love him to pieces. So check him out. Um, he is, yeah. So you just see, that's Mr. Kenny right there. Check him out. And um, welcome, Tank. Well, welcome, Kenny, to the to the platform. Uh, Gwendolyn, are you okay over there? Can we... She's... 
Gwendolyn's having a problem. Man, when the technology's like we're not behaving, we just go to a different a different camera. I'll, I can get it ready later because it needs to be ready later, but I can, I'll go with something else today. So today we're going to talk about something that's really important. And now that I think we have, I think we have Gwendolyn to stay. She's going to be with us. She ain't going anywhere. <laughs> And this is, and, and see, that's the, you know, someone mentioned to me, they say, Ron, my shows are recorded. This is someone that's on YouTube, I think once every week or something. They say, I record once a week. And so I take it off to you because you're on live every day and anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen when you're live. Man. So, um, and that is the truth. That is the truth. And so um, how many times have the sound not worked or Instagram popped off or this wasn't not working? But here we are. And guess what? Instagram is still with us. Are there any Instagrammers in there? Oh, there are some Instagrammers. Instagram folks, come on over to YouTube, uh, Touch Space Daily. Come on over to YouTube. Just put in the YouTube, Touch Space Daily. Hop on. Join us. Today, we are talking good subject. And again, this is a response from yesterday. Yesterday, for all those that are out there that were like me, wondering, oh my gosh, my Instagram must have been hacked because it wasn't working. And then I said, something's not happening. Then I, had to, I did have a little common sense to say, let me check out my Facebook. And it wasn't working. And I said, well, maybe it, it may be unlikely that both of these things got hacked. And, you know, I had to call my guru. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let me call my guru and say, uh, Gwendolyn, is your Instagram working? Which is so bizarre because my mother called me. My mother <laughs> called me. My sister texted us like, exactly when did I become the keeper of Meta? I just want to know. <laughs> I was like, um, do I have like some secret insight to no. what's going on? <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, because yeah, right we know. Either. I think it's down. <laughs> Calm yeah, down. we all know that Gwendolyn is our guru. She's 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 been my guru for fifteen years. 20 years. We just, we just had this conversation. Yeah, we did have this conversation. It's been a while. It's been more than 20 years. <laughs> I'm the husband that forgets the anniversary. Clearly. <laughs> Grand rising from Amparo. Amparo's in the building. What's going on, Amparo? And Gary also sends his love to Miss G. Hey there, G. And um, so Gwendolyn and I were talking. We said, you know what? I, I had a change of schedule. One of my um, guests was not able to show up. And so I was just talking to Gwendolyn about, you know, just talk about stuff. She said, hey, I'll let, oh, well, we can talk about that tomorrow and help the community. And I said, well, you know what? Here we are. So Gwendolyn, first of all, how are you doing today? Besides, doing the, besides, really well. besides the technology, how are it's you not, doing You today? know, tech is tech, but yes. um, even, even when tech doesn't work for you, you still have to figure out how to keep it going. So we figure yeah. out how to keep it going, right? So so I'm doing fairly well. I'm feeling very orange and gray today. You know what I'm saying? So Orange? Yeah. Orange. 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 <laughs> <laughs> orange. <laughs> Orange and gray today. We're being very like rust, rustic. So yeah. Gotcha. Good. How are you, sir? I am doing well. I am. Uh, I did not sleep well last night. Uh, I did something that you're not supposed to do as an older man. <laughs> what did you do? Eat? Did you? I have one late? of these big ass cups of healing. I need water. to order mine. I need. To, I need to order bed. mine today. I need to get it done. And I need to get I... it done. I mean, I'm, I'm rocking. I'm rocking my FIT alumni. Yeah. Today. Oh, yes, right. Uh, Look at that. Cheers. 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 I got the Lisa cup. So those that don't know, it's a Hello Healing cuss. Um, Lisa Healy. Lisa Seely. <laughs> Hello Healing. And uh, so that's my cup that I use when I'm here because it is the best. And I was telling Gwendolyn because she had a little problem yesterday with her cup. And I was telling her that this cup, when it sits, it doesn't, it doesn't tip over. This cup does not tip over. So there's no problems with my electronics while I'm sitting here. Not like the average glass. 
for the <laughs> average other cup. Other so, cups. Uh, Lisa, another one of your um, ad marketing concepts. It don't tip, so get with it. So, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I need to order mine today. I need, I need to go ahead and get it done. I need to get it done. So, okay, so let's go. Let's get to it since we're already here. The first thing is, let's talk about it. And we're going to just go through some of these, and then we're going to chat, we're going to converse. We're going to talk about the one, we got three main ideas. So diversifying your social media strategy is, strategy is crucial for long-term digital success. Let's explore why and how you can achieve this. Number one, don't let one algorithm decide your metrics. Social media platforms use algorithms to start, start to sort and display content. These algorithms can significantly impact your reach and engagements. Um, and to add on to that, by diversifying across multiple platforms, you reduce your reliance on a single algorithm. And for the last part of this one of one number one, for instance, while an Instagram update might hurt your engagement, the same content could go viral on another platform. Well, what do you got to say about that? You know how I feel about numbers, F them numbers. But um, <laughs> hear me clearly. Um, uh, we got, we just, guys, we just got the G-rated G. We got the G-rated here. <laughs> yes, I'm keeping it clean, kids. I'm keeping it clean. Just keeping it okay, clean. So, so I, I know as a person who does digital marketing for other people, I understand metrics. My former life was all about numbers. I get it. Metrics, me, yeah. myself. Me, myself, I don't follow numbers. So in terms of creating your strategy for social media, you should first define what it is that you're looking for and what you're trying to do. If you are truly going there to make connections and network and create community, then that doesn't really have, in my opinion, a number attached. It's about the quality of that connection. Yeah. If you're trying to sell something or you want to go viral, then numbers are going to become your life. But I don't follow an algorithm. I've never really been one for, well, to follow, period. I, I was an odd chick. Right? Yeah, you, so. yeah you, you are. You, but you've always been an independent woman. I was labeled militant <laughs> in high school. So. It was like, no attitude. And what about this? <laughs> That's how we started. So I got it. You know, it's been around for a while. Yeah. But but truly, truly, if you're looking at your strategy, yes, algorithms are going to change time and time again. And chasing chasing an algorithm, I believe, leads to burnout yes. and not being happy or joyful in what you're doing. So I personally don't say to follow algorithms. I say, think about why you are even engaging in social media. Make that be your North Star and stick yeah. to that. I mean, it's interesting because uh, and when when Instagram first began, like there, it became like the trend of putting your posts out there, getting on Instagram, sharing what you're doing, all your, your you know, it became the thing to do for business or to sell something. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first went to a class for Facebook um, as a member of the Manhattan Chamber, we had what's called a relationship with Facebook. And so what they did for us as leaders and as the Manhattan Chamber, they would have classes for us regarding Facebook. And they had just taken over Instagram at that time. And, um, and so every other quarter, we would meet at their headquarters, uh, usually twice a year. So I would say, yeah, it was, every, it was twice a year. We would meet at their headquarters in um, not too far from Union Square. And they would give us lessons on how to engage on Instagram. And, and it, it's amazing. That was probably 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, somewhere around. Oh, well, yeah, it's about eight years ago. I've been, no, sorry, Man Chamber. So I would make it eh, six years ago, maybe six or five years ago. You know, I'm horrible with time. But there were so many things that they were telling us to do, like, you know, post at a certain hour, post at a different time, do this at a different, you know, you know, make sure that your, your fans are doing this, make sure they're doing that. And it, it was long list of things. But at that time, the algorithms weren't controlled so much by what they call today bots. 
So today, the algorithms back in the day, a lot of things, and now you'll go through a bunch of, you know, because I do, I do go to some of the Instagrammers out there, like the gurus, and see what they're talking about. And most of the consensus today is forget, forget the algorithms because the bots change the algorithms not by quarter, not by month, literally in the moment. The bots are changing the algorithm as you go through the day. And there's no way to keep up. So like Gwendolyn was saying, it's so important that you know your mission, why you are on social media. It is not for the algorithms. Like some folks will say, oh my gosh, my account. And I do it. I look at my account and say, oh, it's still at the same spot that it was five weeks ago. And I know I'm engaging people. I know that I've met people that have signed on to my page. I tell, I I tell Gwyneth this all the time. I can go into a room. I just went to several events over the last three weeks. Several events. And I probably had 20 people sign on to my Instagram. Like, hey, I'm gonna follow you. Just like we, you know, when you're in, you're in a networking event, yeah, it's either use your LinkedIn or you use your Instagram. People are just how that's how we. It is now the new business card. People don't pop out with business cards these days. It's LinkedIn or Instagram or Linktree. A, a Linktree, right? Like I do. I when I'm in a when I'm in a networking event, I do this. Yeah. Now scan the code. Just scan it. Just yeah. scan it. I don't have a business. I don't have a business card. Even though there's there's some there just for the old timers. But you will find all those people that I met over the last two, three weeks, my number is still exactly the same. It will go up to 33, 34, mm-hmm. and then go back down to 25. Then go back up to 30, 34, and then go back down to 25, no matter what I'm doing. So anyway, if I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get, what's happening? It will screw up your mind because yeah, you feel like you're, you feel like you're in a rat race. You feel like you're like on this hamster wheel. The hamster wheel just keep going and going and you're waiting for these rewards. Instagram is not here to reward you, even though people say they're here to reward you. And the algorithms are changing so fast that you cannot get hooked up on it. So that brings us to our next points. Here we go. So utilize new and different engagement features. Each platform offers unique features. By joining various apps, you can tap into these features and engage with your audience differently. Part B on that. For example, TikTok. Short videos may resonate better than longer Instagram posts. Experimenting with different um, formats allows you to find what works best for your brand. Right? And I say on that one, that's number two. So again, knowing your platform, you're like, Ron, you post on a lot, you, you're everywhere, you're everywhere. But I change it up and tweak it up as I go. Gwendolyn, you're, on, you're, you're mainly on YouTube. How many platforms are, do you use? Like, like all together? Yeah, like all together, like in general, like, like I, all I, of my I accounts, do, all of my yeah. accounts, all your, all your social media, every, every single name I have, every single one of them. <laughs> I have twenty. I you am have managing 20? twenty. I, I am managing twenty. Yeah, really? I kid you not. Holy moly! <laughs> I was like, that is that. not the number I was looking for. <laughs> okay, so, so let me explain it though, right? Yeah. So everybody has everybody has their idea of what they're working on now. Um, when we say brand, and when I talk about brand, it's just your reputation. You are your brand, right? Yeah. So people people know you as they know you. People think brand, and they try, in my opinion, to create this whole alter ego. It's not going to work out because of your fraud, your fraud, and everybody will always see through that. So don't yeah. do that. So for me, my focus, which was two years ago, I said I'm going to grow Gwendolyn Gr Houston Jack. I need to grow my name. So we're in a number of places, but I am essentially feeding the machine, right? Where you're going to find me being most active is on LinkedIn, right? YouTube because video podcasting and then uh, threads. I am in other places, but things just post there to feed the machine. 
So yeah, so it really it really does depend on what you're trying to do. Right. So there are, there's the businesses, there's me as a business owner and video podcaster, blah blah blah. So so we're managing a number of things across the board. So that goes back to that number 1 of what is your goal when mm-hmm. you're setting out to do something? But here's here's why we say to diversify. You don't have to cuz again, you've grown, but here's our advice. If you want to establish yourself as an expert or a voice of something, LinkedIn is the place to be, not because it's where the professionals go. That Mm -hmm. isn't the deal. It is centered around specific topics. It Mm -hmm. allows people to share their voice freely on a variety of topics. Now, LinkedIn is not excused from trying to create an algorithm or Mm -hmm. having their algorithm. They recently talked about um, no longer supporting hashtags, yet LinkedIn users use hashtags to follow specific topics. We're like, you may not want to support them. We're not letting them go. Because okay? <laughs> I yeah. use my hashtags on the, everywhere. All the time. People, yeah. people follow hashtags. So they are keeping that. Now, LinkedIn may say, well, you know, it's clearly the, the users are saying that they're going to keep using hashtags. So we'll keep, they want to control what you see. People don't have to, you don't have to give into that. You don't have to give into that. So just recognize your power as a user. It's but interesting. If you want to be seen, go ahead. It's interesting that you would bring, mention that because Instagram also has done away with pretty much the hashtag. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, they're like, we don't need the hashtags any longer. It was it was interesting when it, uh, mm-hmm. that news it was came out last month or it was January. I think it was January on their last announcement that they are not focusing on hashtags yeah. any longer. And yeah. it's a search. It's, it's a way to search. It's a way to follow a specific topic. I couldn't follow every single black owned winery or, or a vineyard, but I followed specific hashtags to keep it in my timeline. Mm-hmm. Now what? Right. So, but you have choices. You do have, again, you have those choices, right? So on LinkedIn, that's where I say, if you're, if you want to establish yourself as a voice, mm-hmm. right then you want to put yourself there. And even if you don't want to be a voice, networking with other professionals of all industries, being a creative is a profession. Yes. Right? So please don't think, not to get it. Job. It ain't about looking for a job. My very first, and my, I'm going to say my most lucrative connection came from being on LinkedIn. Same here. And that was with Salesforce. Didn't see it coming, just... So you have to be in places to get those opportunities. And you don't know if you're going to get a new client, a new connection, a partnership, collaboration, if you're not in the room. And this is a very big room where you have plenty of, of space to play. So I highly suggest LinkedIn as being that place. Now, people dog out Facebook. It's where all the aunties are, the aunties, <laughs> grandmothers. Aunties, grandmas, Uncle, Uncle Joe. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with auntie season, all right? Yes, right. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. However... Facebook still pulls when it comes to business. It does. It's it just it does. If you're going to compare advertising costs, LinkedIn is expensive. Yes. Google is expensive. Facebook is still very affordable if you are a small business owner trying to get a little bit of something. They they still pull. Yeah. They still have that. So think about where your people are and where you want to be seen. And people often sleep on Pinterest. These areas have their own search engine. Pinterest yeah. has its own search engine. YouTube has its own. LinkedIn has its own. So like Facebook. Instagram and, does not have a search engine. It does not. It does not. TikTok even is indexed by Google. LinkedIn is indexed not only by Google, but by Bing as well. All of these things help grow your digital presence. So it goes back to your first one. Think about your strategy and then figure out where you want to be to reach the people that you want to reach. Interesting you would say that uh, because we definitely, we got the numbers in February because, you know, I'm I'm a numbers guy. I am a numbers guy. (laughs) I do collect my numbers. I do collect my numbers. I use chat chat GPT to run the report because I'm (laughs) I'm so overdoing reporting. So I'll throw it in there and it's like, here's your stuff. Great, thank you. And then I go about my business. But it's interesting that um, TikTok overtook Google as the number one search engine 
in the world. TikTok. 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 Overtook Google as the number one search engine in the world. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that. It's a huge search huge engine. Search like engine. people, people don't think about all the places. So, so I'll step on Pinterest really quick, which has the longest staying power in terms of social media. Your pin can get shared a thousand times over, and it has so much staying power. Instagram is good for like what five minutes, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. And at least with Pinterest, not only can you shop on Instagram, but you can also shop on Pinterest. You can run your ads and it has a longing stand power and it is searchable. That's the yes. thing. It is searchable. So if you're not doing Pinterest and you have product or you're a photographer or you have an education program, whatever it is, it's another place to post up, feed the machine. Yeah. I underestimate the power of Pinterest. And like, duh, it says picture. <laughs> Pinterest, pictures of interest. But here's the deal. So, so I, I search for my name twice a month, beginning of the month, end of the month. And then I search for my company's exact same way. I want to see what's going on there. So the coaching digital marketing business is only like a year old. So I'm still very new and I'm getting my sea legs and everything. Right. But I search and who would have thought that somebody took some of my videos and posted them on Pinterest. And I was like, Maybe I should be on Pinterest. Why do I, why do I have a Pinterest account? I don't want to say it. So yeah. It's, you know how you know how I got on Pinterest? I I when I use Pinterest for my interior design business. So I go through, as a matter of fact, when I'm working with my clients as uh, interior design projects, I do all my storyboards on Pinterest. Same. So uh, if I'm designing a dining room, what I will have my clients do back in the old day, we would tell our clients. Go grab these magazines, <laughs> Metropolitan Home, Architectural Digest, House Beautiful, Dwell. all those things, you know, all those magazines. And we would, I would tell my clients to go and then everything you saw in the magazine, cut it out with a scissor and put together a folder. So, mm-hmm. and we would label it dining room, mm-hmm. bedroom. And so they have folders for their spaces. Now, because of Pinterest, I, I mean, we obviously we that we've been now using Pinterest for like a de- more than a decade yeah. um, for interior designers. So you, most interior designers will use Pinterest as their storyboards. So usually, what I have my clients do is go through the internet, or go through Pinterest, or go through a particular website, and they can literally because on every picture on the website, everywhere you go, is a Pinterest mm-hmm. saint. Mm-hmm. That's how powerful. Yeah. Pinterest is that even if you go onto your website or on your website and put the cursor on your photo, it will say saved mm-hmm. to Pinterest. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful tool. But I know my clients, my clients, they get crazy. They were like, Ron, I found this table. <laughs> and then they got the table, they got the lamp, and I'm going down there. And, like, and then I post stuff in there too. As a matter of fact, I have a interior design run after this. We're going to pick out an area rug for my client's um, living room. But I will have my clients go through Mm -hmm. and we will get, and then that way I get a feel of their their style. Yes. My job as the interior designer is to help my clients discover their style. And then so I can say, oh, you know what? You're modern industrial Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. you're classic contemporary or you're modern contemporary, or you're just straight out modern. So um, the Pinterest is an amazing tool. I think we talk, a lot of we photo- a lot of photographers, because there's a lot of photographers listen on this platform. I think we photographers underestimate the power tool of Pinterest. I, I use it to the yeah. game. Yeah, I, I, I use it for. I share, I share my work. I also share uh, other topics, but then for my clients, same thing like you, I do it to create a storyboard to get an idea as to what we're thinking and what we may be looking for in terms of our theme. And then that's how we communicate that we're on the same page. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great tool. Here's a, Chris says, I use Pinterest for storyboarding for photography. Right, projects. see? I Yes. 
Yeah. You know I who put me on to photography on Pinterest? Obviously, my mentor, Omar. Omar was like, hey, you got to get with the Pinterest program. I was like, the Pinterest program? I used it for my interior design. Never used it for photography. And it, it's a whole nother yeah. world. And another. It, there's so many advantages of being on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Just saying a lot of us photographers and we creatives are sleeping on a tool that is so handy. And like Gwendolyn said, it has a search engine. Yeah. So when you put in your photo of, let's say, mountains, or I see Mr. J hey, good morning, Mr. Gerard is in the building, Mr. Gerard Gaskin, the, our ballroom photographer expert, if you put in ballroom photography on Pinterest, he comes up. Or everyone, all the photos that deal with ballroom. Mm -hmm. I think photographers mm -hmm. were sleeping on a gold mine. So mm -hmm. I uh, I think we should mm -hmm. go there. So photographers, creatives out there, or you're doing paintings or you're doing art. I mean, I see a lot of art on paint on Pinterest. But I don't like, I don't necessarily, I mean, I see more photography now than ever before, but mm -hmm. I, it's still a hidden treasure. It is, right? It's been around for a very long time, yeah. extremely long time. And and they will also give you like, they do their, um, I guess they're sort of like fall projection. I think it's like, it's in the fall, fall to spring projection. So they, they will talk about the trends. So mm -hmm. if you're a creative, you can get ahead of the game. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. And other times I'm like, it, it has nothing to do with me. Um, but it's good to know like where things are headed. So I, I suggest if you're not on it. And then you could also do like your own personal because I have a lot of stuff like my personal, my personal yeah. stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's a, oops, here we, here we go. So for number three, own your community. And you've heard us say that, you've heard me say this a thousand times. And so I'm going to say it one more time. Well, no, it's not going to be the last time. I'll keep saying it. One more time. Oh, oh sorry. That's, I was, sorry. That was a, that was a song. Uh, 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 own yeah. your community. <laughs> Building an audience off platform is essential. Consider mm -hmm. connecting with your followers through email, newsletters, blogs, or other channels. These direct connections ensure that changes in social media platforms won't disrupt, dis disrupt your entire audience base. Now, this got us to thinking yesterday. We're on Facebook, uh, Instagram, I should say, Instagram. Now, I just started using YouTube eight weeks ago, like to be, to bring, we brought our community over from Instagram to YouTube and we're loving it. I think everybody in here are glad we made the switch as a community to move from Instagram to YouTube. YouTube is primary, Instagram is <laughs> secondary. Cause for some reason, People still come through Instagram to get to Touch Base Daily on YouTube. So I was so happy yesterday. I was so confident and so full of glee. Gwendolyn was like, Ron, aren't you glad? I said, yes, I'm glad. Because <laughs> we would not have been on yesterday because Instagram was shut down during the hour that we usually are on. Mm. So again, the diversity, because not only we're right now on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube right now, all three platforms mm -hmm. right now at the same time. So there are people on three platforms watching this live. Mm. Yeah, but it felt so good that diversification is important. It's not just important with, you know, your food, eating many types of food. You can't just have bananas Money. every day. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have some food. It's not the same. You, you got to diversify. I come from the Wall Street background. So mm -hmm. on Wall Street, the number one thing you learn to do is to diversify. 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 Mm -hmm. Buy some options. Buy some stock. Buy some bonds. Buy some 
Bitcoin, buy some, yo, diversification mm -hmm. is healthy to a great portfolio. Well, it's the same thing as we do social media. Diversification is highly, highly important because you never know when one of these platforms, one will be out. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine that we Instagram <laughs> said, Today was our last day. If they gave you notice. Okay, so for those of us who enjoyed, <laughs> if they gave you notice, for those of us who enjoyed Google Plus, and Google has a way of creating stuff and just killing it just to kill it. I don't know what they oh, I don't know. Yeah, they, Google they, Plus was great, they enjoyed, wasn't it? Loved Google Plus. They gave us advance notice. So a lot of the folks that I was chatting with on Google Plus, we exchange personal information privately. So that we could stay in touch. Spencer, I met Spencer from Google Plus. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought the he genius. knew some things For about For those that don't know, our friend Spencer, <laughs> my friend through G, um, <laughs> is a technological genius. Yeah, yeah. And he helped me figure out some things. He was, I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Will said, talk to Spencer. Yeah, he'll, he'll hook you up. So but again, Google Plus was a great platform. It was great. It was it was very it's very much like threads, but yes. but it was you know slightly different. I enjoyed Google Plus. They shut it down, but they <laughs> gave us notice. And so people decided <laughs> Google Plus like Christian Mingle. <laughs> no, it was no. Well, not there's even. Some, isn't there a form of Google Plus out there? From my understanding, there is still one like for businesses, but it's 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 like but a I, usually I see, well, it's, most yeah, of the time I not, see call, yeah. I don't want to call them call girls, but I see people from other countries on it trying yeah. to get a husband, an American husband. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> Don't know a thing about that. So if it has changed since then, I don't know. I okay. can't. All it's I know is what you want to do, as Dr. Tachi mentioned, is you want to create your community, move your community, connect with them on some other platform that you yes. own, right? Just in some other place. People have a lot of Facebook groups, really thriving Facebook groups. It's yeah. great now, but what happens when the dynamics change? What happens then? Yeah. How do you do it? So I know we mentioned some time ago, I invested in GoBrunch. It's one of the places where I meet to, to keep things going. We do have an email list. So you figure out what do I need to do to, to stay in contact with my community, my customers, my audience, whatever you want to call it. What yeah. do I need to do? At some point, you need to exchange some private information. LinkedIn, same way. People are snatching up accounts all over for what I don't know. Mm. But if they were to snatch up your LinkedIn account, would you lose all of your connections? Yeah. Right? So consider having another place to land. But, you know, taking your online, offline. Maybe you do meetup. Maybe you do any other something that puts you face-to-face -face with people or even virtually that yeah. you can own so that if any of these platforms say we're not going to charge for use or we are going to shut down or do something different your group your community does not suffer die. okay when well, you, you wouldn't suffer I'm, I'm like it's gone it's dead <laughs> <laughs> we'll say so oh, guys um so now this is our q a time so this is kind of like what do you what do you guys think about all this i mean have you guys thought about, you know, have you thought about what if Facebook shut down and there was no Facebook tomorrow? Have you ever thought about if Instagram, I, I know I'm always thinking like, I'm a, I'm a big nerd. So this is in nerd nation. We think about these things. Like what if this ends? What if this stops? What if this begins? What happens when something new happens? And things have, like I was on blackplanet.com back in the day. Was that the nineties? Was that the nineties? That's the 90s yeah. I was on Black Planet. You know, I, I never had a MySpace. So never had a MySpace either. Didn't miss that. I mean, there have been other platforms that have come and gone. Come and so gone. So we know that, you know, everything has a time limit. Look, figure think out. About, think do. about where we were 20 years ago. AOL. <laughs> yes. The chat rooms. The chat rooms. We were in oh. chat rooms. Good times back then. B Good for times. B and G for B and 
Yes. The chat rooms were the, the chat, chat rooms. rooms were all crazy. We we all the lived in AOL chat rooms. The chat rooms. I'm thinking about um Blackberry Messenger. Man. Yeah. Talk about <laughs> talk about some DMs. <laughs> and where is live, research? I, I didn't live there, but if you I never know, really? my friends, uh oh I did have chat rooms. I did yeah. some of my friends, we interact with well, I, you know, I, I was never a bar person, so I was never like hang out at the bar and meet people. Yeah. No, we had chat rooms that we all talked and say, "Hey, check out such and such on this chat room. Check on this chat room." But last time I checked, AOL is a. Uh... You still have your email address. I don't know if there's yeah. chat rooms, but I'm looking at Rex's comment about Tumblr. That was big for a hot moment. Tumblr was I don't good know. Too. Yeah, yeah. Tumblr was good for bloggers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was the blogger platform. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. the it was the platform that bloggers lived and dwelled. Think about there was a time when blogging was everything. Right. Everybody wanted to be a blogger. Every news anchor, check my blog out. Check my blog out. You can still blog. I still blog. People still blog, but it's not. Okay, but here's the deal. So, so, so my, my I mean, I mean, it's there, my, but it's not there. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't do, I don't do as many blogs on the photography site. I still do some, but because LinkedIn is now indexed, I have moved my blogs from the website to my LinkedIn pages because they get indexed and it also helps with growing you as an expert on a particular topic. In your so. business, exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you People go. Realize, and also here's the, here's the thought too. The, the great thing about social media and using social, like I, I'm a believer and you hear me say this over and over again. Social media is for being social. Right. <laughs> it's like, what's the point? of having hundreds of names and hundreds of people that you maybe will see, especially on Instagram. You know, Instagram is like 0.001% will see what you do. Yeah. So you got 10,000 followers, but only 100 will follow you. And what and, you're doing, what's going on. And if you tried to sell a shirt, you couldn't, you couldn't sell one. You couldn't sell a shirt. You right. sell the shirt. So Some women that. I think with one of the celebrities, they were like, you know, I got, I was thinking 32,000 followers. 32,000 followers. And they tried to sell a shirt, and guess what? They only sold five. <laughs> this, this one chick had like millions and, and sold zero. Is numbers are numbers, that's great, but people, it's really about engagement. So I'm like you. I remember in those fun days of Twitter where we would do um, in real life meetings, you know what I'm saying? Be like, everybody's going to meet on so-and-so. And so we would all hang to that one place and, you know, sit down and eat and chat and gallery hop and all the stuff. It's about being social. Yeah. It's about so you, being social. Jarai <laughs> says, it, 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 it is important to be, con uh, to be contacted, to, to connect with your people in more than one place. So, if one closes down, you are still yeah. contact. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's the yeah. point, y'all. I mean, you don't point. have to. It would just be best. So, like, if you're in the area, then by all means, put your face in front of somebody else's face. Or, like, as the auntie say, put your eyes on you. I need to put my eyes on you. Make sure things are good. Because Rex says the new connection space people use is what app groups? Yeah, I've heard of that. I don't use I'm, a WhatsApp I'm, group. Uh, rest, I'm, slow. I will. I'm slow to get on WhatsApp. I'm slow to do the WhatsApp group. I I mean, I've been, I've, I've had people talk about, I mean, I've seen it, but I've never used it. Uh, I, I, am, is Rex the only one in this community that is using WhatsApp groups? Or are there many others out there using WhatsApp groups as your social media connection with friends? We'll find out. Yeah, interesting. Good, interesting it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, there there are so many. Like, if you were, um, there is a what yeah, that? Tell that, Chris. Yeah, it's international. If um, there's a YouTube video, and I have to find it, but they show all of the social media platforms worldwide. Yeah. We only talk about the ones that we know because we're here in the U.S. That yeah, there's a whole lot around the world. There's a, a lot, and WhatsApp is definitely on that list. So, depending on where you are. 
you know, I, I typically use it when I travel sometimes other than that. But again, I always use WhatsApp overseas. When I'm traveling overseas, it's WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah. And because I used to travel a lot overseas, that's how I, that's how I got yeah. into WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Because I yeah. communicate, make calls around the globe and not have to be charged for it. So I was like, this is a good bargain. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do uh, it. So Trish there's a number of WhatsApp groups. No, she's not. She doesn't, she doesn't do it either. Um, I have used WhatsApp a few times. Well, I use I use WhatsApp a lot. And my son is in the building. I will talk to him on WhatsApp sometime and talk to him mm-hmm. on well now that I've been now that I've upgraded to Apple, I can do <laughs> he's always teasing me about Apple. <laughs> like, not you with the program, Pop. Who's you with the program and, and like We're get with the time? <laughs> We're not doing it, not doing it. So I get to have several platforms, even in my computer world. I have my I still use some Samsung devices and I have my Apple devices for my photography. So in conclusion, let's conclude because we got to let you guys get to work. That's right. That's what we got to do. We got to let you guys get back to work. Okay. Conclusion. Remember, diversification isn't just about using multiple platforms. It's about adapting to each platform forms, nuances, and maximizing your chance of success. By staying flexible and exploring new avenues, you can future-proof your brand in the ever-evolving social media landscape. I think that sums it up, right? Evolution is where it is. How we, how we connect changes. How we live clearly changes. How we're working is changes. The social media platforms are clearly also changing. So we have to evolve. I love a good phone call. I'm going to tell you that right now. I love a good phone call. And although I'm not very social, if we are at some place and we're all meeting together, I'm good for two hours, maybe three. And then I'm over people. So I like face-to-face. Face-to-face is the way to go. I good face-to-face. I'm going to put this up because I want to laugh. I want you. My son says... Praise God, he has seen the light. <laughs> That's enough. I won't put you up here again. Oh I won't put you up here again, but yeah, he's my heart. He's my heart and soul. Uh, but yeah, he's like, yo, yo, yo when are you going to get with the program? And and so, as a matter of fact, I'm due for a date to get to his house. I was supposed to go there last week. Um, because every time I'm there, he always like gives me like these little tips. Like He gave me little tips about how to use my, my, um, my laptop. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I could do that and like switch it over there and move it this way. And yeah, so it's, it's good to it's good to be on multiple platforms. I can now, now I know how to use two systems. I can use my Windows system still because I still have a Windows computers and laptops. And I also have my Apple, which I have, my learning curve has been very long and large, but I'm learning and becoming better at it. <laughs> Should I say to my son? There we go. Wait, wait. There we go. There we go. I love you, Sonny Boy. Uh, <laughs> Chris says green and blue bubbles won't be an issue on the fall with ISO Ooh. in the 18. Whoa. I'm not even going to talk about green and blue bubbles. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to. I just, you know, the things that we put energy into, I swear to God Almighty. Yeah. You know, like, yes. seriously? Really? <laughs> Although, although yes, Chris, I agree with you. And I, and I like how he was like, hey, you want to FaceTime? I was like, bruh, I don't FaceTime. <laughs> He's I, like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Everyone in my family, everyone in my family, every all of my friends, except a couple of us, uh, are they use, they're all on Apple products. And uh, my cousin was like, you're finally, in, you're finally with the program. But it, I have to say, it is, it is. For, for photography, it is one. It is so much better as I edit my work on Apple products. It really is seamless. I love it, and I still love my Samsung too. So I may have my Samsung phone and my, you know, who knows what. But again, uh, <laughs> we can we can have a chat about that also. No, my son says. Let me airdrop you these pics real quick. Oh, wait. 
<laughs> See, I just think it's so, you know, we're not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to loop into it. Cause all I know is where I'm out and about, I just quick share everything and people are done. But here's the deal. It still goes back to like, whatever works best for you, Ron, is whatever yes. works best for you. It is. It's there are only a few things I would probably say I am gung ho on. This is what works best because, yeah. you know, but other than that, as an educator, it's a computer. Figure that shit out, goddamn. <laughs> Cut it out. I don't um, know how wait, to Is mom in the building? Just, like, is mom in the it's building? It's computer. Can yeah. we stop? Ooh, yeah. my God. But I have also, so it is, uh, it is 12 15. So we're going to let everyone go. You know, G, G snuck one in. She snuck one in. <laughs> Be okay, because I mean, okay, as, as an educator, there's nothing <laughs> that hurts me than people. <laughs> people give these Auntie excuses Gwendolyn as to why they, can't, <laughs> so why they can't use technology. I don't know how to because I've only used this, and I don't know because I've only. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. Like, it's it's a tool. It's a tool. Exactly. So we get up the and use the tools we call today. I, I love having several types of cameras. I have a Sony camera. I have a Canon. I have my Nikon. I obviously use my Nikons, yeah. but I have other cameras also. Diversification, folks. That's the key. That's Diversification. The key. So I have a couple of announcements. <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday, I mentioned that we would have our Touch Base Daily meetup at MoMA. But then I was like, Gwendolyn, I think we need to be more personable. Yes. And if we have a meetup at MoMA, people are going to get lost. They're going to be this place. They're going to be that place. And I was like, man, I want to have it at a gallery. And then I said, maybe it's too late. I just talked about it, being at MoMA. And then I got off of here. I went across the street to my where I work, out of the coffee shop. And then I'm going through my emails, and lo there, be be there beholds, there, on my D in my DM, someone, someone slid into my DMs. I know that sounds nasty for some people. It does. Ah, it does. Into the DM, but someone slid into my DMs, and they gave me this. I'm going to share it with you. For well, they just they were just sharing, saying, Ron, I think you should go. But guess what? <laughs> now we're all going. It's called the Gordon Park Ex Exhibition. Mm. They're having a Gordon Exhibition at the Jake's Shanman Gallery. Mm. Shanman Gallery on the west side of Manhattan. So on the fifth Saturday at 2 o'clock, we will have our meetup at the Jack Shanman Gallery. And you know what I had to do. I called them up. <laughs> I called them up immediately and said, well, my name is Ron Foster. <laughs> I said, my name is Ron Foster. And um, I do a live or called Touch Base Daily. And I have a little community. And I would like them to come out to your gallery. Is that possible? They're like, yes, that would be beautiful. Come on out. Mm -hmm. Just let us know how many are coming and we will set it up. And also, we may also try to get someone to curate the Gordon Parks exhibition for you guys. Can I tell you the power of putting things out into the universe? Mm -hmm. Put your, if you think it, just say it. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so immediately last night, I went to town on getting the marketing together. So on the fifth Saturday of this month, because we are meeting, our Touch Base Dailies will do a meetup every fifth Saturday. So that only happens three times a year. But we will be meeting at the Jack Shane, uh, Shaneman Gallery at 2 o'clock. But please... There is a meetup group and do the RSVP. Uh, there will be a link for you guys on our meetup group. So if you go to Touch Base Daily on the meetup app, it will pop up. I already saw two people from, the, from this community already signed up for our meetup group. The reason why we definitely need an RSVP because that's only being respectful to the gallery. 
So we're going to have our meetup there. And then around the corner is a great restaurant. So for those that want to do the after party like we like to do, we'll be hanging out at the, getting some booze. Oh, not booze, because I'm a wine drinker. <laughs> but wine, some food. Yeah. I mean, isn't that so cool? So we're going to have a great time. So if you're in New York on March 30th, that's where we'll be as our community does our second meetup. And we're going to have a good time at the gallery. And you couldn't get a better celebration than to go through Gordon Park. Yeah. And it's called Born Black. That's going to be it, awesome. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. And we get it curated. That's going to be even more. Yeah. But it's, I mean, look, just being in the room with Gordon, Gordon Park's works. Right. As a photography community. I mean, I know we have creatives in this space, but we are truly a photographers, lovers of photography community. <laughs> so come on out, put that on the calendar. Also on the fourth Saturday, we are having our um, our um, RLP Urban Photographers Meetup. That will be in Soho. So if you're into street photography, we'll be doing that in Soho on the fourth Saturday of the month, which is the week before the fifth. Saturday in the month. And then also if you are in the Patreon community, if you're not, you need to join so you can support this black, this black brother as creatives. We support creatives. But what we're going to be doing on, I like to give back to my community. And so we're going to be teaching about ISO, how to use ISO in your um, photography. Mm -hmm. And that will be this, uh, sorry, the um, third Thursday of the month, which is next week, next Thursday. Okay. I think we got all the announcements in uh, I see here, Anthony, let's say, welcome some folks in here. Anthony is in the building. Uh, I see here, Rex is in the building. And Kimmy Kim and my cousin, <laughs> where, where did she go? I saw her up here. Fa Edna is in my building, in the building. Miss Edna Foster is in the building. That is one of my cousins. Uh, I'm, she said, I'm going to have to check out one mm -hmm. day, real soon, every fifth Saturday. Put it on the calendar. We will have a meetup in New York City every fifth Saturday of on a month, whatever that month is, usually three times a week here. Okay. I think that's it, guys. And Gwendolyn, you have any last statements? Do you have anything that's coming up that you want people to know about? Mm. You got a lot. You're always speaking. You're always talking. Well, well, you know what? Okay, yeah. So um, they are, uh, Go Brunch is doing a world building expo today, later this afternoon. Beautiful. There were over a hundred people yesterday in this virtual expo. So if you want to check out some other ideas of using Go Brunch and perhaps get like a little discount or something, yeah, I would advise right. to just do that on my LinkedIn page. I have a link to that. I'll be there this evening doing the expo. So yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even think about this. Like I'm always doing something. Go always brunch. doing something. Oh GoBrunch.com, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's GoBrunch.com. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you're on LinkedIn, there are a lot of us who are in the expo. You can check it out and yeah, go in. It is free out. to attend, but yeah. Awesome. Go brunch. And I see here Eldridge is in the building. Yes, I see everyone's connecting. Okay, guys, this was a wonderful. I hope you learned something. Oh, I'm trying to burp there. <laughs> I felt like a sailor. Um, <laughs> so if you had a good time today, if you learned something, I hope you did. Um, and so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for joining. Tomorrow will be Chris and I. Tomorrow is our thankful Thursday. And we'll be talking politics and current events. Mm -hmm. So tune in tomorrow for that with Chris and myself. It is, could y'all just, could y'all give a round of applause to our G.R. Houston Jack. She is amazing. She shows up. She, uh, she is the one that, I mean, I got the best co-host, the best co-host in the world. You're so kind. You're I so know. kind. <laughs> I, you make it easier. I mean, it's easy to work with your work wife. My work wife for more than 20 years. <laughs> this You're getting chemistry, it. This You're chemistry. Getting it. Yes. So it's good to have her on. <laughs> and um, so guys, like, like, there we go. Look at, there's the hand clap. There's those old boys from Miss G. Miss G. And she only slipped once. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm doing so much better now. I'm, I'm working really hard to keep it together because the good Lord keep it knows. You never know when little Junior will run into the room. I know, right? You know. But yes, well, okay. At least you didn't use the F bomb. You only use the S bomb. And most people use no. the S bomb. So yeah, people do use the sugar honey iced tea once in a while. Oh my God. You did not just go there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> My god, my aunt, my godmother say, dog it, sugar honey iced tea. We're like, <laughs> oh, kids. Sugar honey iced tea. Awful. That is awful. You know, okay, so if if I may, in yes. other circles, I run in the S word is saying something like stupid. The D word is saying dumb. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's that language that's yeah. actually more detrimental than what we consider to be vulgar. Yeah. FYI. The sugar iced tea is, it's just sugar iced tea. It's just sugar But stupid tea. and dumb are horrible. Far Holy worse. Song. Yeah, those are not good words. Far worse. Okay. That's another conversation for another time. Yeah, you have to, now Gwendolyn has all those subjects. So y'all want to check her out on her live. And just and also just go on to your, her channel as well. So check out Miss G.R. Houston Jack on YouTube. And if you are not subscribed to her, make sure you subscribe to her channel as well because she has a lot of great stuff on her page and her channel. Thank she you, She really Thank covers, you. I mean, her, one of her interviews with to Tonya. Tonya, right? yeah. I, woo, man, if you are a business owner, and you want to know about trademarking? <laughs> she had us crying. I mean, I was like, "How am I going to pay for a lawyer? I need to pay. I need a lawyer." <laughs> she was really good. She was. She, she was, was really good. So yeah. Good. Oh, Anthony says he never heard that before. Sugar, honey, iced tea. I ain't, I ain't never heard it. I you mean, never heard that before either. My dad just said it. My dad said a lot of things. <laughs> I get this honest, so I pay. It's like, look. Oh, we used to hear that all the time from the no. old folks when we were kids. No. I mean, Anybody they would never that. say the S word in front no. of us, but they say, oh, dog, sugar, honey, iced tea. No. <laughs> sugar, honey, iced tea. That's all we knew back then. <laughs> Dr. Taji says, I love the word stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this community is too funny. Absolutely yeah. too funny. Okay, guys, we are out of here.